Good morning. Oh, we're at day three, week two. Oh, still talking about addictive thinking. Um, this morning, I thought I thought it would be smart for me to kind of let's talk about this one particular thing that we do. We call it a secret, but yet and still we need to face the truth. It's just simply lie. That's what it is. It's just lie. And so I, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, briefly about how important it is that we look at this lying spirit that has been released you know and now has tried to give it another name and they try to call it an innocent secret but it's really not a secret it is a lie you know when I was coming up as a young girl I remember uh, the insurance man used to come by the house you know if a mom paid the insurance bill or you know someone would come by that she didn't feel like she wanted to talk to or the phone rang I know you know what I'm getting at uh, that lie that I'm not here I'm not home uh, we all find ourselves doing that in some fashion, whether you want to admit it or not, preacher, uh, saint, uh, that is angel, I'm talking to you right now, that may have wings and a, and a halo from heaven. I, what I really want to share is that the fact of the matter is that we are played in this United States with a lion spirit. It started at the beginning of time. We all know that. You know, I don't even want to get into Cain and Abel, I don't want to get into Adam and Eve, you know, and all this lying from the very beginning, and we won't even get into the lying prophets today. And so, but I, I want to share this part about this plague of lying that we have covered up and called it, uh, I'm a secret keeper. And so, I want to share Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19, it says, These six things do what the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running, what, running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discard among the brethren. You know, discard alone will cause you to try to keep a secret. You may share it thinking you're keeping the secret and they're telling it in a whole other fashion than what you share with the person who probably didn't even qualify to share the information with. Uh, and so now they turn your little secret keeper mentality into simply a liar. And what I want to share uh, also about how dishonesty is, and I want to share these stats uh, what I got off of the internet is just talking about this plague uh, and even uh, how even God's ministers today have become so immune, you know, um, that are not immune, that is, to the spiritual infection called lying or keeping secrets that have caused so many people to be violated, so many of people within the body to be violated and, you know, spiritually molested or, and or pimped in the spirit realm to the point that it's like it's a norm. But the stat says this. It says, as the moral climate of our society has been deteriorating, lying has become a major problem. It says so to the point that even lie, even lawyers are lying. They've increased to the point that they lie to you and get your money and still lie about what you have not done while they call themselves defending you. I know I'm talking to somebody. Some of the questions that was asked in this survey about the percentages of people who lied or were dishonest about things were such as these. Do you cheat on your income tax return? Do you compliment people when you are really when you really don't mean it? Oh, I know you innocent uh, you innocent that that is you're saying do you tell your spouse to tell callers you are not at home when you're there do you tell little white lies if it will keep you out of trouble do you tell creditors that the check is in the mail when you have not yet mailed it do you exaggerate in repeating things you have heard and they said that these results of this survey came back what nearly 80 percent of americans were not telling the truth depending on the circumstances and so some stuff that we call secrets these lies have to be dealt with you know because the Bible says that a liar will not tarry in the sight of God but the reason why a lot of people go through this type of mentality of holding these types of secrets is because the mystery of iniquity according to 2nd Thessalonians 2 and 7 it says that the mystery of iniquity doeth all 
really work. But what is happening is that that iniquity that has not been dealt with through the generations, the lion spirit has leaped around and it's intensified in many of the people, particularly the body of Christ, who are up lying and proper lying to people to look big, to look super anointed. And then the people are hurt, the people are spiritually and emotionally wounded, the family is going through all types of challenges financially because they lie. Give your hundred dollars today, and I can guarantee you you're gonna get a thousand next week, or you'll get the job. We've got to understand that the lion crop has been loose today, and these things that we're talking about that are the secret keepers. I want to stay in that mode as we begin to kind of pull out of this message when I'm talking about keeping secrets. So many kids are keeping secrets today about what's happening in their very own homes with their parents being violent, with their own pop, their own parents, maybe one or the other or both, because I've had that in my caseload before, where they both were having sex with their own child. We've got to understand we're in a time right now that these secret keepers is the reason why a lot of these kids are killing each other. These secret keepers is the reason why a lot of people are taking all types of psychotropic drugs. These secret secret keepers are the reason why so many families are going through divorce because the wife forgot to tell the husband certain things. I never get out watch a movie one time. And this woman and her husband was trying to have a baby, you know. And all the time the man was spending all this money out trying to get all these tests and everything. And, you know, she never took any tests, which is crazy to me the way the movie was. Because, like, to me, she don't went on and took her test. But they never took any tests. He just kept being depressed because he thought he was shooting blanks. And all the time the girl had a tooth tied. You see what I'm talking about? It's just dumb. It's just crazy. And what happened to that marriage? Of course, the marriage ended. And she just cried and said, please, I just didn't know how to tell you. I, I knew you wanted kids and I didn't know what to do. But see, that lying secret keeper spirit is what caused so many people to spy on their, their, their spouses, spy on their kids because the lack of trust. They watch what you lie about and then you try and tell them you better not lie. But yet you done told them a lie for the people on the phone, you know, told them to lie about things that, you know, you cannot do, or tell, you, tell them at school I'm going to buy it tomorrow, and you know you ain't going to have the money, not even in the week. I'm, what I'm saying is that you teach the kids to lie, and then you turn around and you tell them to quit lying. All this undercover, this hidden agenda causes people to have the trust, the lack of trust. They tune out the pastor, they tune out the parents, and they don't believe anything you're saying anymore because you've lied so long, you kept secrets in the house that, you know, don't tell your sister that she was adopted. Don't tell your brother that, you know, we, the reason why we didn't come to see him is because your, your, that his mother really didn't even, that wasn't really ever his mother. These kind of things uh, are, are so uh, emotionally, you know, devastating to the point that the people cannot deal with it and they begin to have the murdering spirit. See, the Bible says, you lie, you cheat. Not the lie, what I mean, the old timer said, if you lie, you cheat, you cheat, you steal, you steal, you kill. And this is so true. This is why we got so many have rippled through these places before. We have people that start to ask each other questions when they're dating. Oh, well, what do you work? You know, well, how, how much do you make? You know, well, how do you feel about abortion? How do you feel about domestic violence? How do you feel about incest? You know, they ask all these questions about how do you feel about, you know, a different children? And yet, you know, they never tell the real truth. Then you marry these jokers, whether it's the woman on the woman's part or the man, and then they start abusing your children. They start verbally being angry with you all the time about things they think you spend too much money or they think, you know, if you got pregnant, you should have an abortion. Because deep down inside, this secret that they have within themselves, that they were haters of children, that they were abusive, and that they were perverted. And I want you to know that in this hour, if we don't get to understand the process of forgiveness, of healing these things that we call truths, and actually keeping those, that we call truths and actually their secret lies, is causing our children and relationships Relationships and marriages to die. I know I'm talking about a lot. I'm trying to keep it short. Within this hour, we have so many children that are disrespectful to the parents. So many parents and spouses and relationships are being destroyed because of lies and because of a form of godliness, even in the church, that people can't even trust the pastors anymore. You know, when they get to saying they're having a hard time with the budget, then they go to talking about they need money from the red suit campaign or the pastor's anniversary. And ain't nothing wrong with these things, but it's just the way that they're being approached with these secrets. 
Because why? They misappropriated money, so now they want to keep it a secret and then tell you all that this is the truth what we're being faced with. But I want you to know that the secret keepers have certain fruits that I want you to look up. And then after that, I want you to get into a prayer time that you can talk to God about your tongue about your accuser of brethren, about your deception, about your ways that what you hide, the things that you tell little white lies, whatever that means, those things that you tell your spouse, those things that you know you have done on your income tax to get a little bit more money, those things that you find yourself doing so that your spouse won't get mad at you like hiding the shoes in an old shoe box, you know, buying the new dress and pulling the tag off and pushing it way back in the closet, you know, putting it on and say, oh, I've been had this, you just don't know, pay me no attention and know you just bought it. You know, these lies, these secret keepers, so oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. See, this is what caused a lot of these kids that lost their identity. Because you kept a secret in the house. You let them cross-dress. You let them do these things because you wanted to be secret. And then on the outside, on the way to church, you want to dress like a boy. You want to dress like a girl, whichever the true gender is. But inside the four walls, you let them be gay. You know, you let these things go on. The secret keepers. Oh, I know I'm hitting somebody's house. And they won't even get into the fact that the secret of abuse among relationships is on the rise. I'm going to live in testimony. And then the sister, the preacher's wife, go to church and say amen. If she don't say it enough, she might get slapped when she get home. She better act like she like it. She better act like she hold it. The children the same. And we're wondering why we live in one way behind the four walls. And then we go outside with our Bibles packed. And in the car, we go to church like the Jetsons or the Huxtables. And then we get out of church and cuss each other all the way home. Shut the door, throw the Bible down, and get back to the secret keeper family matter. And I'm telling you right now, God is tired of it. And so this is the hour we got to repent for the lies, repent for the generational iniquity that we've allowed in our family to continue. And so the secret keepers list of some things that you can see. The first thing is they're going to have difficulty in being truthful and honest. Once they start that, little bitty lies going to go to bed. And then they blame others for their behavior. Or they keep secrets, bend the truth to match the situation. Or they may snoop or pry into your personal belongings or your personal life. And you ain't even said, I do. You haven't even said, I'm going to date you. They just want to find out, snooping around in your stuff, going through your glove compartment of your car, looking on your cell phone and see who's been texting you. All this crazy mess. Secret keepers. I mean, I wouldn't even talk to anybody. I ain't know anything about them from the first beginning. You got to sit down and get to know these people from the beginning. And how do you get to know them? Just like I said, ask the question. You don't have to pry. Because guess what? What's in a man, the Bible said, is eventually going to come out. You don't want to wait to try to figure out what that is. So take your time. Don't jump into these relationships that you have not examined to see if they qualify on the same level. You on that is equally yoked in the spirit of God and not of your flesh, sexual desire. That's what's messing everybody up. Thinking that if you do it in sex, it's going to be better. No. That spirit is going to come out, whatever it is. Why? Because secret keepers are deceptive. And secret keepers are simply liars. And you got to know that every time we lie, every time we do what this proverb is telling us that the God hates, it is forbidden. Why? Because we're not only are the accuser of the brethren, this lying spirit is destroying the family and every fabric of the very word family. Why? Because it's sowing discard, it's speaking lies, it's shedding innocent blood out of hate and unforgiveness and anger because of the secrets that the family have kept and how the relationship started out with nothing but lies. And so it's up to you. Tell the truth and set yourself free. God bless you. It's up to you.